everyone, my name is Rhonda Robson and welcome to my Fluid Art channel. Today I can't wait to show you a couple blooms in my son's favorite color, blue and orange. And we're gonna take that, we're gonna show you how to make the skins and peel the skins off and then take the different pieces of glass and glue it on, cut it out, and make magnets out of them. This is a really cool, different way to take your art and make something very unique. Let's get started. All right, well, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure you put down what we call a pillow paint. Now that pillow paint is Sherwin-Williams Semi-Gloss Ultra White, and you can use probably any ultra white, but just make sure it's semi-gloss and it's nice and thick. Then you're gonna put whatever colors you're gonna use. Today I'm using, obviously, the blue and the um, orange, like I told you. And my recipe is three parts Sherwin-Williams Space C to two parts polyacrylic Minwax, or it's Minwax polyacrylic. But anyway, you mix those together and then you add one part paint to one part paint mix. And so it's a one-to-one -one ratio and you mix that all together and you get this nice consistency that runs right off the stick but is a little thicker. And then you're going to use what we call a cell activator and the cell activator is four parts Australian Floetrol to one part Amsterdam paint. Once you put the cell activator on, then you're gonna blow down and across the colors, allowing that cell activator to glide across that and use the pillow paint to push down and allow those cells to come bubble back up. So this is awesome because it's the Australian Floetrol that's in this, so it creates cells immediately. But again, you just blow down and across. And so I'm trying to get it so that it goes all the way out to the sides. And then once I get mostly done, if I see some white, I just puff down into it, kind of like what you see me doing right now. And then when I'm done, I look at it and decide, am I going to um, do some type of a design in it or am I just gonna leave it as is and spin it out? So that's what I think about when I take a look at this. You know, what do I wanna do? Do I wanna do a um, design in it? So taking like a skewer or a stick and kind of making it. Um, and then this time also allows the paint to kind of come back into the center. It kind of, you kind of pushed it out and now you're kind of allowing it to come back into the center. So I noticed that there is some um, um, corners that don't have paint on them. So to help it glide across better from that corner, I'm just adding, I'm just taking a little bit of the paint with my palette knife there and I'm putting it in the corners. There I just decided to do a curly cue and just some added like little swooshes through it. It's kind of cool because you can bring like the color out into the white or like an orange into the blue or the blue into the orange. You know, if you have a little bit too much. You don't have to spin it too much. You wanna spin it enough to put take the weight of the paint and push it out to the sides, but you don't have to spin it too much. I really like what that looks like right in there. Isn't that cool, that webbing? So I had two different color blues on this with the orange. Can you see the two different color blues? One's kind of like a, I don't know, kind of like a lavender blue, has a little bit more coolness to it. Yeah, Isn't that cool? Awesome. And then there's the end results for the magnets. Really cool, really cool looking magnets. All right, so here's a second one that we're gonna do. And then I'll show you later on how to do the magnets, right? But right now I wanna show you a second bloom. So you put your pillow paint on. Again, it's Sherwin-Williams Ultra White Semi-Gloss. And I'm just spreading it out by making it a little kind of level. And I decided on this one, I was going to, because I had the two different color blues in the last one, that I was just going to do blue, orange, blue. I 
All right, so now that I have the colors that I'm going to use, and it's just the two colors, then I'm going to put the cell activator that I'm using. And again, the cell activator is the Australian Floetrol that I've been using here recently with the Amsterdam paint, just the white. And I just put it right there in the middle. And <laughs> I guess I'm putting it everywhere on this one. Holy cow, Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> and then you blow down and across the paint again using that pillow as it bounces back man that looks so cool the Australian Floetrol really works nicely um, with the the activating of those cells and it, it's the consistency of the cell activator that really helps drive the cells because it bounces down and it pushes them back up so you see that how it comes back up and you see the orange and now you're seeing the blue and the orange right there that's what's happening it's a reaction by pushing down the white into the blue in orange and as that bubble comes back up it creates some really cool cells so now I'm just allowing the paint to come back into the center and again deciding, am I going to do a skewer? Am I going to just spin it out as is? But I really like this two-tone, just two colors in here, right? It's just the blue, orange, and blue. So sometimes simple is better. Sometimes we add a ton of different colors, but sometimes, you know, it does. Some it is better. So I've decided on this one just to go ahead and spin a little bit of it out to see if I want to do any um, designs in it using the skewer. And I decided I needed to spin it out a little bit more to get uh, that paint to kind of stretch across that tile. But man, doesn't that look cool? Oh, oh, kind of looks a little dizzy there. When it's to the side, it looked worse than it does from the top, doesn't it? Oh my goodness, that's so cool. I don't know if you can hear, but my cat is actually purring. Isn't that amazing? So that's the wet results. There's the dried results behind the glass really cool all right so what's next is the steps that it takes two through six to take this bloom and make these amazing different magnets all right let me get you going on steps two through six thanks for watching today all right so next step is to peel the paint so let's get that started Hey everyone all right well I'm gonna show you what I do with my tiles um, to make skins out of the blooms that I did. So I use um, an X-Acto knife um, or straight edge, whatever you want to call this, um, box cutter. I That's all the same uh, in my mind. <laughs> I call it an X-Acto knife. Uh, it's not an X-Acto knife, but that's what they're called. Uh, that's what I call them. Um, <clears throat> but these are um, my blooms that I am going to peel the skins off of these. And I use them for all kinds of things. I use them for wine glasses on the bottom, so you can see them from the top and then the bottoms. I use them for uh, medallions. Here's a couple of them that I have. And um, even like golf tags, like this could be like a golf tag to put on your golf bag. Um, I use them for magnets. Here's some magnets that I have. Um, and I've got some really cool sizes of magnets um, for later for this group. I actually have square uh, magnets, uh, which are really cool. So what, I, what you could do with skins, oh, and I use them for jewelry. So these are just, I don't know, just some of the jewelry pieces that I've done. And what is really neat is when you don't like something, like that would look cool on a magnet, right? So if you can't use this whole skin for maybe a wine glass or, or something else, you can definitely use them for magnets or other smaller pieces 
of art. So today we're gonna I'm gonna teach you how to take them off of these tiles. Now the key to taking them off the tiles is two two things. One, you need a glossy surface of the tile. These are some that I've used over and over again. But you need a glossy surface on the tile. And um, and they do they do tend to stick together if you're um, putting on top of each other. That's the reason why I tilt them um, side to side. So like I go like that when I'm putting them on top of each other. But they're nice and shiny. And then the paint that I use for the underneath is a semi-gloss white. And I think the combination of the semi-gloss white paint and then the glossy tile sure helps the fact that these peel off really easily. So the one thing you can kind of see is I don't put them on top of each other. I was doing that on this one because my paint here will stick to this paint here. So I'm gonna show you using a piece of paper over top of them. So I'll do all of these eventually, but um, this actually is hopefully um, for my son. He loves orange and blue, so I've got a couple of those for him. But I take the knife, whatever knife you're using, and I start in a corner. I keep my hands out of the side, and I just start in a corner and I slide the straight edge down the corner. I turn it and I do, whoops, I went off the side there. The other corner, corner to corner, corner to corner. And then the last one, oh yeah, I already, did I already do this side? Nope, I didn't. <laughs> Just going everywhere. If this right here is underneath is jaggedy and so I'm not doing a very straight job. So. And then I just take my corner and then, okay, that one I need to cut to there. Take the corner and I start peeling. And if it got, gets kind of hard, I go to the sides to each corner and I peel it off. And that's how simple it is. Now, from here, you don't want to pile a bunch of these on top of each other. Remember how I said these stick? So let me show you what I do is I actually take my paint skins and I put them in between like this. Okay, and so I just put uh, paper towels or you can use paper, whatever works, but I use paper towels and it works really nicely. These ones are kind of in a mess right now. Um, but anyway, I, I save my paint skins for the next time I need them for somebody else. So. So there's one paint skin, and I'm just gonna keep going with these groups. Now, one of the things that I do have is I keep the on the edges here, you can kind of see there's paint. I can go back, and I, well, I'll, I'll use the other knife since I was using it. I can go back and I can scrape this off pretty easily. So it just peels off just like it does on the top. Now on the sides it gets a little bit of the roughness and so it's a little harder. So I just reuse them over and over again. They don't, I don't need to get them clean. They don't have to be clean because I elevate the bottom so it's not on this. So the drips just kind of fall down to the surface that it's drying on because I have uh, little caps that I put underneath these to hold them up to dry. All right, so I'm just going to continue on and do these other paint skins. So there's the first one. We'll just do one at a time. But what I'm going to do is, let's see, I really like to use this surface here. Keeping your fingers out of the way. first be careful of the knives that you're using that's just that easy so it's this white paint and this glossy that really I think makes a difference so there's my paint skin and it can go off to the side and then like I said on these I just alternate them like that because they, they will stick and it'll take a little bit to pry them off but anyway okay 
The next step is to decide where you want to glue the glass on. All right, everyone, we're gonna take these paint skins, and what I mean by paint skins is that they are actually that, paint skins. And we're gonna take those and we're going to make magnets or these little itty bitty cute little rings to put on your wine glass, okay? I am not making wine glasses out of these, I'm making little decorative art. So, um, but we'll have these little cute little guys go on here and then they'll have a little ring and it'll go on the glass. So these paint skins, what I wanna do is I wanna take these um, glass pieces and I wanna glue them down to an area that would be really pretty for them. And I'm gonna use these ones that I have made last weekend. And how I glue them down typically is I use Liquitex Gloss Medium it just works really well for me. Um, it's, it doesn't hardly ever have air bubbles. I just press it down and it's there and it works really good. And then for the backs or for the metal portion, uh, what we'll do for these, and so I glue then the, after I cut it out, then I glue the piece down with this diamond glaze. Now, you can also use the diamond glaze for this. I tend to not because it's super sticky and it gets on my hands and then um, it's hard to get off. So I just use it for it to take the glass and put it on the metal. And then I use the Liquitex medium and that actually comes off really nicely off my hands. All right, so we're gonna get started. So I think I am definitely going to be doing the square magnets for my boys. So I'm definitely gonna be putting these on the blue and the orange for Blake. And I usually do this, I usually get it so I know about where I'm gonna place everything. That's pretty good. Okay. All right, so next step is actually gluing the glass on the paint skins. Just one drop and then I put it on there and then I squish it out, okay? That way it gets all the bubbles out and it gets it all the way to the edge. And it's fine if it builds up on the edge, don't worry about that, no big deal. And I'll show you why when it dries. And if you don't like it where it was at, you just slide it to another no new location, right? So don't lift it up and try to remove it, just slide it. Yeah, I just it just works better. seem to do this very well today. Make sure you're on the paint skin.
Okay, and see how you've got the um, the I don't know a glue coming out the sides. That's okay. And then just push down on every one. And tomorrow I'll be able to cut this out, and I will be able to use this extra some other time too as well. to do it fast and we're just going to do it the way I normally do it not do too fast for you so you can see how I do it and everybody's got their own little tricks of what works for them I'm just kind of showing you and I keep paper towel so I can get it off my fingers easily you can use gloves if you want I just figure well I just don't. <laughs> One last thing I have to throw away. I guess I have to throw away the paper towel, don't I? Too funny. I just kind of wiggle it till it's in place and it squirts out all around all corners so it doesn't peel off. Right there. put this one I'm not sure I like that area I'm gonna peel this one off I'm gonna do what I said I wasn't gonna do because I can't move it clear over here there we go. So those two are done. The next step is to cut the paint skins around the glass. Hi everyone. All right. Well, I've got some of them cut already. So you can kind of see here that I've got these cut. I've got some squares. Um, I even have it right here shown. This one is um, the ring that I'm going to be doing for wine glasses. I've got a couple of them already done with magnets on them. This is what they'll look like for magnets. But I wanted to show you um, what I do once I have them on my sheet, which is my paint skin. Oh, here you go, paint skin. This is, they're dry. The, I made these yesterday, and so they're nice and dry so I can start cutting them. And uh, it's really up to you how you want to cut them. I use a pair of scissors like this, and then um, I cut them out individually like this because if I try to cut around it, sometimes I cut up underneath and I don't want to do that. So let me give you an example of how I cut it. I just kind of just allow the glass to kind of turn in my finger and I just cut the piece off. Now you can see that there's some extra right there so I kind of come on the top and I grab that and if you do have some extra on the top just use your fingernail or you know your scissors and just cut around that so and sometimes you can come on the top and scrape it off too as well so there's this one grab glasses see it better a little bit there that one's got some on the top there that I'll get in a little bit. But there's that. Let me move this out of the way so you can see them. So there's that one. Here I'll do this square one so you can see that. Just cut straight. If you cut this way, you'll cut the back. And then you'll have glass just um, shown on your magnet. So 
I'm just going to cut around the corners, get it exactly with the glass, and then that's done. So I take the, uh, the circle ones and I just kind of spin them in my hand as I cut. You know, and does this take time? It does. So you know what I do is these ones right here. I was watching football with my husband, and I like football, but I don't necessarily want to watch it all day long. But I like to look up when there's a good play. So I just cut these while we're watching football together. Um, so in these little teeny tiny ones, I'm making for these here. Let me show you one of those just really fast. And then I'm going to show you how I glue these on the backs of my magnets and on my rings here. Let's see, I think I've done done all the sizes for you, so I'll just do one more here. Okay, so that's what they look like. Now, let me put my scissors off to the side. Don't put these back to back like this or they'll be hard to peel. So that's why I always have them on paper or I'll have them on paper towels. Uh, but I never put them back to back, okay? And now the final step is actually gluing the glass to the magnets. And now the magnets, I also buy those in sets. So they come with this, which is the glass piece. And then they also come with these magnetic circle discs. And I know you can probably purchase you know, just these and then purchase the magnetic and cut it out yourself, but it is super fast and super easy, so I don't. I just do it this way. So the cool thing is, is that these just pop out like that. I line it up. Let's do a green one. I line it up finger to finger like that, and I just press down. That's how easy it is. And that magnet is finished. So let me show you a few more. Let's go ahead and do the green ones. These ones are for my son for Christmas. He's a Green Bay Packer fan, football fan. And if you get it and you peel it out of there beforehand, you just have to take this off the back. So how easy is that, right? All right, so there's those. Let me give you the bigger ones, show you the bigger ones. Nope, not those ones, these ones. So these are the medium sized ones, which are typically um, the ones I get are the medium ones. But this time I thought, you know what, I want to get different sizes. Um, and I love the square ones. I may have to do a lot more square ones. Those are almost probably going to be my favorites. And the big circles, these ones here, look at those are nice, aren't they? All right, so let me grab that one. Put these off to the side. So it makes it just super easy, nice gifts for whoever you're doing Christmas or birthdays for. For me, these are really great for those smaller gifts. Um, I'm doing them all for my kids, but for like stocking stuffer type stuff, stocking tougher stuffers type stuff. Say that like three times in a row. Anyway, stocking stuffers or um, for coworkers, or I'm actually making um, the, a lot of these are gonna be for coworkers and for my board of directors. Um, you know, they, they work hard to make sure that our Y is um, running really well and they really support me, so I appreciate them. So I wanna make sure that I honor them too as well. So I wanted to just do something small for them, but something meaningful, something that I made. And um, yeah, so you can kind of see this is just, it's kind of addicting because it's really fun and you're done. Like I just finished a complete set in this time frame of magnets for my son right there, right?
Thanks for joining me today. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell. And if you like this video, I bet you're going to like these as well. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Bye. Bye.